Hello, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selena, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hola, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, elections office suspends PDP. Police to beef up numbers for New Year's. And new standards for fiberglass boats. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Smith. The Registrar of Political Parties has from today suspended the People's Democratic Party for 30 days. Following the resignation of party leader Linda Tambuya, the PDP was required under the Political Parties Act to update the Register of Political Parties, and this has not been done to date. Together with this, Sudelpa Vice President and former PDP man Vijay Singh has been referred to FICAC for a possible break of the Electoral Act. Savita Thambur reports. Registrar of Political Parties Mohammed Sanim says the registered officer of the party is the key contact and liaison with the Fijian Elections Office and the PDP has failed and or neglected to appoint a suitable person as per Section 11 since 21st December when Tambuya resigned. The PDP has 60 days under the Act to remedy the breach and the suspension will be immediately uplifted following the remedy. The Supervisor of Elections has also sought certified copies of the Memorandum of Understanding that was signed on 9th December by Tabuya of PDP and Sitibeni Ramboka of Sudelpa. He says it has become necessary to verify if the agreement properly merges both Sudelpa and the PDP, and if it does so, the Act prescribes certain procedural requirements that both parties were required to follow. Sanim says that since the FEO has not received any particulars as at the date of the press release, some deadlines as per the Act may have been exceeded. Both Sudelpa and PDP have seven days within which to furnish the FEO with the certified copies. The FEO confirms having receipt of resignation letters from Linda Tambuy on 21st December 2017 and from Vijay Singh on 22nd December 2017. During the press conference on 9th December this year, Siti Beni Rambuka had congratulated and welcomed Vijay Singh as the newly elected vice president of Sudelpa. The supervisor of elections has this afternoon referred a complaint to FICAC in relation to the possible contravention of Section 15.3 of the Act by Vijay Singh. Upon receipt of the Memorandum of Understanding, the FEO will be able to establish if both parties had complied with their own party constitutions prior to the signing event. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. More police officers will be deployed this weekend to control and keep watch over New Year celebrations around the country. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Venigilio says this is to ensure that the public is safe while heralding in the new year. Pranita Prakash joined the police chief in Nalsori today as they went on foot patrol in the busy town. Expect more police officers on our roads and at checkpoints and night spots. Not necessarily in uniform. Uh, we are working covertly as well uh, with, with uh, officers not in uniform. We see that as an effective way to deal with it and I think it has been noticed. Uh, we need to look after people who are enjoying themselves at night because we have a group of people that are targeting them, especially as they come out of nightclubs when they have had a few to drink, when they are in that vulnerable state. People are, are, are targeting them. Police Commissioner says officers from the police tactical team have already been deployed to monitor movements this weekend. Uh, they are already out there um, and we can't divulge much of our operations because obviously the other side will pick up with it. The visit by the police commissioner today provided an opportunity for people to meet him and to raise issues and concerns with him. We are very glad to meet and see. You don't have to go to the police, they didn't solve, but today. He got the solve, solve our problem. We are glad to meet him and raise our concerns about crimes in Fiji. Police Commissioner says the foot patrol today provided an opportunity for him to get a feedback on how police operated during this festive season. He has also given his assurance to all Fijians that all reports lodged during this busy period will be looked into. Pranita Prakash, FBC News.
The National Fire Authority has attended to more than 9,000 ambulance calls over the last three years, and this has averages at 3,200 calls per year, or 266 calls per month. This was revealed by the Minister for Local Government, Praveen Kumar, while handling over three new more ambulance vehicles worth $266,400 to the National Fire Authority this morning. The inclusion of these new vehicles will see the expansion of NFA's emergency ambulance service into the rural areas, especially to the people of Korolevu and Korovo and Tailevu. Minister Kumar says this will increase the total number of ambulances to nine being operated by the NFA and will ease response for those that help in emergencies. Since we commenced the reforms of National Fire Authority in 2012, there has been a great improvement in terms of NFA's capital development and its response to fire and other emergencies. I'm confident that the purchase of these ambulance vehicles will further push NFA's capacity to respond to fire and emergency incidents. The Fiji Ships and Heavy Industries Limited has revived its fiberglass boat building industry. Fiji Ships Operations Manager Lopeti Ranravu says this is an effort to raise the standards of fiberglass boats in the country. Sainiani Boila reports. Most fiberglass builders are not maintaining the standard, which is an issue for buyers. Fiji Ships says the International Maritime Organization has put in place regulations and criteria that boat builders need to meet. Unfortunately, uh, in that, uh, I would say that uh, we as uh, boat builders are not following uh, these specifications for, for compliance to the standard. In that, I say that that can be some of the contributing factors where this uh, fiberglass boat uh, have been missing out at sea, apart from the engine problem that they do have. And Rabu says they also test all fiberglass manufactured in Fiji before approval is given for it to be registered and is ready for the market. There are criteria that we must follow. First, when we build uh, the vessels, uh, the structure has to meet the criteria. Uh, Apart from that, the rigidity of the vessels, we should comply to the regulations uh, that it says that we must have the, the LSA, life-saving apparatus, uh, out at sea. The company has so far manufactured five fiberglass boats and already has plans to expand the industry. Prepare all uh, life rafts, all equipments uh, required by MSEF and also the certificate from MSEF. We also conduct swamp tests for the boat to be seaworthy before we sell them. Fiji ships manufacture six and seven meter fiberglass boats ideal for small fishery operations. Plans are also in place to further include bathrooms and other built-in suitable for domestic and commercial use for the benefit of boat buyers. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Still to come, Beach de Merban to be re-looked at and we continue our look back for the year. Stay with us. Bula, Kero Mai Singatoka, Kero Ndo Tali Taka Navarro Rong on the Radio Fiji One and Ndo Moi Viti. I have a new thing. 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 The Ministry of Fisheries will reconsider its decision on the ban of beach demur in the next five years. Savaratambo reports many Fijians, especially those in the outer islands, are concerned about the ban, considering beach demur as their main source of income. But in a wide view, restoration of the species population is more important. Fisheries officers have noticed that the count of beach demur in a fishing rounds has reduced and that is the reason for banning this export. Fisheries officer Rithembe says they understand many people in the outer islands rely mostly on beach timber as their primary source of income, but the ministry will maintain the ban to protect the species. So five years is the time that we are looking to, uh, to continue this closure, and at the end of that five years, 
it is the ministry's role to conduct another survey. This is just, uh, it's just like a population count in which we would consider if the population of Bichitama has actually increased. It's good for, it's for the sake of our future generation so that uh, we can also allow the Bichitama to have a uh, uh, breeding so that uh, we can have, uh, we can still have a Bichitama in the future. I believe it's a, it's a good decision. He has also confirmed that the ministry is looking at other alternatives such as aquaculture. Uh, there are things such as aquaculture that the ministry is looking to develop further and uh, we've, we have already um, set in place uh, ways of improving this and also uh, alternative sources of income uh, for, uh, for coastal communities. We also have introduced feds so that we would uh, reduce the, uh, the efforts that we are putting into our reefs and our coastal uh, system. A number of exporters have complied with the beach timber ban, but some continue to export the species despite the potential penalty of $20,000 if caught. Sabira Tambua, FBC News. As we approach the end of 2017, we take a look back at some of our top stories from May to August. Akusita Thale with the highlights. Suva was faced with an asbestos care when renovation was ceased at the Civic Center due to the danger to workers from asbestos, which could cause a deadly lung infection called asbestosis. The building contained 30% asbestos from bulk material tested and was not an airborne sample. Meanwhile, an avalanche of disappointment, news that the United States had chosen to withdraw from the 2015 global agreement was disheartening. Prime Minister and COP23 President Vorenge Banimarama expressed disappointment with U.S. President Donald Trump's decision to withdraw from the Paris Agreement. There was also shortage of cement in the country. One of the biggest suppliers, Pacific Cement Limited, said they were unable to meet the increasing demand due to the old age of its factory, which suffered constant breakdowns. The shocking statistics of pregnancy in schools was also a major concern in the country and the Education Ministry is now working on ways to get students back into the education system when they are ready to resume studies. One of Fiji's highest profile rape case, Jezreel line of Judah prayer group leader, Chone the Kanauto, was sentenced to 20 years imprisonment by Suva High Court Judge Justice Alesi Temo. The Kanauto was convicted of 10 counts of sexual offenses, which included five counts of rape, one count of attempted rape, and four counts of indecent assault. He raped four women of his church congregation from 2002 to 2015. Prime Minister Vorenge Ben Marama also launched the 10 cent plastic bag levy in a bid to reduce plastic waste. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Thousands are expected at the FBC 3112 Street Party on Sunday, hosted by Bull FM and Mirchi FM in Nandi. Families and friends can be rest assured that this event will be a safe and fun-filled event to farewell 2017 in style. Bull FM personality Ben Rakanave is inviting families and friends to come down to Koroi Bolu Park and enjoy the alcohol-free family event, food, rides and good entertainment. The New Year Party in Nandi starts 6 p.m. and ends midnight. Preparation for the 112 in the West uh, is going uh, too good, which is uh, uh, we are looking forward uh, for the night on the 31st of uh, this month. Yeah. There will also be a street party in Suva on Sunday at the Albert Park. Turning to world news, a member of the public has beaten Britain's best photographers to the one shot they were all dreaming of on Christmas Day. All it took was a little luck and plenty screaming. Ahead in sports with Jamie, Ashes Cricket heats up, but we now join Akusita Thale for the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening. Coming up, Fiji being showcased in China. And in growing Fiji, new road sweepers for councils. Bula FM number 2 and seri
Leading business, Fiji is amongst the Pacific countries show showcasing its culture in China at the South Pacific Island Nations cultural event. The week-long event aims to provide visitors a rare chance to interact with diversified cultural elements of the South Pacific region. Twenty-seven nations and territories, including Fiji, Solomon Islands and the Norfolk Island, are showcasing their culture, art, food, handicraft and products. Permanent Secretary for Industry, Trade and Tourism Shaheen Ali during the opening stated that such events play a very important role in promoting cultural exchange and trade flows between China and the South Pacific region. He further stated that Fiji and China share a special relationship which is evident from the high-level commitment provided from both sides. We now join Sharon from HFC Bank with the latest from the trading world. Thank you. A brief update on the global market. The US dollar fell to a three and a half week low against a basket of currencies this morning. Traders are betting that due to faster global economic growth, more major central banks will begin reducing monetary stimulus next year by increasing interest rates. A rally in commodity prices led by copper and oil drove the Australian dollar up by 0.6% to the highest levels in recent weeks. Japan had a few releases today. Their retail sales for November were above expectation at 2.2 percent versus a 1.2 percent forecast. Their large retail sales figures came out at 1.4 percent above expectation of minus 0.6 percent. Tomorrow morning the U.S. releases its initial jobless claims and continuing jobless claims which may influence their dollar. Otherwise a very quiet week. And that's all for now. Vinaka. Thanks, Sharon. Now looking at today's currency exchange rate set this morning for the Fijian dollar, the dollar rose against all but the regional currencies showing a minor dip against the OG and Kiwi dollars and the PNG Kina. On the commodities market, oil prices were down slightly at $59.57 a barrel. Gold was up at $1,287.65 per ounce and silver also rose to 16.68 an ounce. In growing Fiji, Minister of Local Government, Housing and Environment, Parvin Kumar has handed over four street vacuum cleaner trucks to municipal councils. The four trucks, which cost $850,000, come with the latest features and can also be used to water gardens with a 9,000 litre capacity tank. The councils can also use the trucks to attend to fires, provided there are trained staff as well. And that's business this evening. Now to sports. Here's Jamie with the latest. Thanks, Akasita. And good evening in sports tonight. Singh confirms for February indoor bout. And hype builds for annual Mula FM Marist Volleyball Tournament. This and more coming up. मैं प्रमिला वायरुकु रेकी रेकी से सुबह मेरी आँख खुलती है तो मैं मिर्ची एफएम सुनती हूँ मिर्ची एफएम इस नंबर वन इट्स सो हॉट हम लोग बार टाउन के केरिया ड्राइवर लोगों ने हम लोग के मिर्ची एफएम सुनो अच्छा लगे मिर्ची एफएम इज हॉट हाय मैं संध्या नारियल रेफ्रिजरेटर से मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची � In a bit to spice things up on the local front, Westwood Boxing Promotions will host an indoor event at the Novotel Hotel Lamy in February. The main bout of the night will be Fiji's very own Sebastian Singh defending his WBF Asia Pacific title against an international opponent yet to be confirmed. Eroni Tuinuku with the details. It has been a long wait for a boxing event to be held in the Central Division. Was, uh hard to get uh, venues in Suva, so uh, Novotel came in my mind and I said uh, it will be a totally different uh, class for the people to sit in a indoor uh, fully air conditioned uh, uh, center, event center and watch uh, boxing and enjoy the boxing. 
The event is ranked as an international bout whereby the boxers will fight for rankings and the title. Singh needs these fights to maintain his title and also the rating. He's already in the world rating, so he has to defend his title every six months or within a year to uh, maintain his title and to keep his rating uh, going on the top. Sebastian the Sniper Singh is looking forward to boxing his way to victory in front of home fans. Well, right now I have the World Boxing Foundation, Asia Pacific, so that covers Asia and whole of the Pacific region. So right now, the team we are gunning for, like I said, WBC, right? The program is scheduled to take place on February 2nd at the Novotel Hotel from 6 p.m. Eroni Tuinuku, FBC Sports. Going into its 10th year of competition, organizers of the annual Mbule FM Marist Volleyball Tournament say over the years, they've witnessed an improvement in the standard of competition as they prioritize player welfare. They hope to boost competition further this year with extra incentives for teams from the pool stages. Roni Tuinuko again with this report. They managed to get the points back as a good serve now from Manasen Senloli. The main focus of this tournament is to be the best if they want to compete with the best. We noticed that uh, the players uh, lifted their performance in playing indoors. Uh, we gave them the environment and the opportunity to uh, showcase their talents in the right environment. Uh, this year we're having it at the Wonderful Arena and the uh, multi-purpose courts. The event provides a unique format of competition that will help the players lift their standard of play. Uh, the prize money is uh, 12,000 plus, uh, 4,000 for the men the winner in the final and uh, 3,000 for the woman. And uh, they are bonus prizes, uh, starting from pool games. Um, every team that wins in the pool game gets uh, $50 uh, per game. And this uh, carries on towards uh, the finals. Meanwhile, main sponsor Mbula FM is happy with its investment with the annual event. And we are hoping to continue with this uh, sponsorship uh, in the... Um, uh, years to come. There are three major volleyball tournaments in the country which will be held in the first six months. However, the Marist competition offers the biggest prize money of 12,500. The tournament will be held on January 26 and 27 at Suvas Vodafone Arena. Eroni Tuinuku, FBC Sports. Manchester City moved 15 points clear at the top of the Premier League football table as Raheem Sterling scored the only goal in a dominant display away at Newcastle. Meanwhile, Tottenham's Harry Kane has ended 2017 in record-breaking style after netting a hat-trick in the Hotspurs' five goals to two route over Southampton yesterday. Day three of the fourth Ashes cricket test is currently underway in Melbourne. However, the story of the second day belonged to England's Alistair Cook as he made his first Ashes century in almost seven years to lead England's resurgence. Playing in his 151st test, he reached 100 in the final over of the day after Stuart Broad claimed 4 for 51 as the home side were bowled out for 327. That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather and in the world of the weird and the wonderful segment, take a look at the annual winter fishing festival in China that's said to be a thousand years old. That's coming up. Bula, Kero Mai Singatoka, Kero Ndo Tali Taka Navarro Rong on the Radio Fiji One and Ndo Moi Viti. I have a honor in the I am going to go to and go to the hospital. I am going to go to the hospital. I am going to go to the hospital. I am going to go In new media, it's that time to say goodbye to the gadgets and services that met their demise this year. This including Windows Phone, the Connect, 3D TVs, Apple Shuffle, and Nano and AIM. What the time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the Weather World. 
such a stunning day throughout the country today. The sun was absolutely beautiful. We could have more dry conditions, so keep yourself hydrated. Taking a look in the west today, purely beautiful with variable clouds. Eastwards, from Back Harbour to Suva, sunshine throughout the day with humidity. And up north, cloudy skies hampered over the blue skies. Such a lovely scene. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots with moderate to rough seas. And for the tides, high tide tomorrow morning will be at 3.39 with low tide at 9.27. Sunrise will be at 6.32. For tomorrow, it's the best day of the week, so get ready with your chilling plans as the weather will be all clear. Tomorrow's temps, Lambasa will be hot with highs of 31 degrees. And looking further on to Saturday, it can't get any better. More sunshine up for us. And that's all from the FPC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fijian Pulse today, we asked, what are your best memories of 2017? Our best memory for this year, 2017, is uh, when we first have our first baby daughter. My memorable moment in uh, year 2017 is um, my, my time with my family during uh, Christmas Day. My best memory for 2017 is my wife and my daughter. Thank you very much. The most memorable moment coming to Fiji from New Zealand to spend time with my family in the village. Spending time with my family during Christmas. Recapping the main stories, Elections Office suspends PDP, police to beef up numbers for New Year's and new standards for fiberglass boats. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we are asking, should there be harsher penalties for people involved in temple sacrilege? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day is from the Lomai Vipi group. Sereana Semo captured this at the Maingani village on Batiki Island. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Good night. Radio Fiji 1 and 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 Radio Fiji 1 and